Okay, so I put up a video the other day about this Flex Solar 200 watt portable briefcase style solar panel. We did some performance testing charging up portable power station and it put out plenty of power. Uh, this is a pretty good size uh, portable system if you're looking to recharge your house batteries or your power station or whatever. Um, 200 watts is pretty good. One of the things I like about this uh, panel, unlike a lot of others I've seen, are that it comes with three different cables here. So you have your, uh, if you're charging a power station, you have a SAE connector on the one end and it goes into your power station, which is really convenient. That's what a lot of people are going to want to use this for. Uh, there's also an SAE to Anderson connector. If you have uh, anything with an Anderson connector, you can want to use. And some these are getting more and more popular for van life and RVing. So I don't have any, but if you do want it, it comes with it already, which is nice. And these cables are both three feet in length. Uh, if you need a little more, you can always get an extension cable, but that's um, just look on Amazon. You can find cables or go to any place that carries electrical stuff they should have it but uh anyway you can always get an extension cable if you need a little more length and then it also comes with this cable this is 10 foot long and it has bare wire on this end and alligator clamps on the other end so what this allows you to do is to connect this 200 watt solar panel directly to a traditional battery so if you have uh you know agm or lead acid batteries in your rig and you need to charge them up, you can actually connect these right to your house battery. You could also charge up your engine battery, uh, which price of fuel being what it is, a lot of us run the engine for a bit every few days when we're camped out boondocking, just to make sure that the battery stays charged. Um, I also do that to scare off rodents, but uh, <laughs> um, if you want to charge it up, or if you have a dead battery while you're out, you'll forget something on or whatever, you end up with a dead battery in the middle of nowhere. It's nice to know you can connect your panel up to your battery and recharge it. Okay, so after I published that video, I had a question from Untethered Nomad in the comments, and he wrote, don't you have to bypass the charge controller on the panel if you're plugging into a power station with a MPPT controller? Um, yes. <laughs> well, I, actually, I don't want to clarify. I'm not 100% sure if you have to, but yes, that is how this is set up to work. That video the other day was the first time I tried recording a video outside so I'm back in Wyoming and we had some traffic noise that you don't usually hear here. We're, we're pretty well off of a, a, a main road, but uh, for some reason I get traffic noise. Then the power company guy pulled in and had some questions about a fence that's getting put in. And then the wind picked up and started gusting pretty good. So if you saw that video, you heard some wind noise at the end. So I had to cut it short. And in all of that, all those distractions, I managed to forget to really show you the back of the panel here. The wind is still blowing so today, so I'm not even trying to do this outside. I gotta set up my couch, and it gives you a pretty good idea of uh, the the uh, exposure you're gonna get for sun with this thing. It's a good sized panel. Um, so this is the back of the panel, <laughs> anyways. Um, this, these, these are the control boxes. I don't know what the right term is for them, but every solar panel has a box like this on the back. They may look a little different, but that's where they got some circuitry in there and the wires come out that you're going to connect to whatever you're connecting to. So also on portable solar panels, you're generally going to have either a solar charge controller like this. This is a PWM 20 amp controller. Or I don't know if any come with MPPTs. I don't think I've ever seen a portable with an MPPT controller on it. And then some of them, instead of having the solar charge controller, they'll have a little box with like USB plugs and in it or something and a connection just to go to a portable power station what i like about this one is it gives you the flexibility you've got all of that you can do whatever you want to with this panel uh, it does have fold out legs on the back here too one on each of the panels there are two panels hinged together um, everything's decent quality aluminum construction on this uh, the hinges are decent uh, but anyways that's what you see on the back here and they, they do have a little plastic corners on it to help protect it a little bit while you're moving it around and stuff. So you see this box is connected to this box tying the panels together and then this is the power coming out. So both of the panels are coming up through this power and it's going straight into the solar charge controller. So I'll show you now how you can use this with the solar charge controller to charge a traditional battery or how you can use it to connect to your portable power station or to use with the Anderson connection. 
So you want to make sure these are connected so that the power is going into your solar charge controller. And in this case, we have two bare wires. And the way these work, this is every solar charge controller I've seen has been essentially the same. Um, there are little screws inside these holes. And so you want a little screwdriver, or you can have a bigger screwdriver. It just has a small blade on it. These are actually Phillips, but they'll also take a regular, and that's what I happen to have handy to demonstrate with. But you just you want to get yourself in front of it so you can see. If you're like me, you're going to have to put your glasses on because I can't see anything that small these days without them. But you just put there in there, and you turn left to loosen, right to tighten. So as I was telling my granddaughter the other day, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, we were working on her bike. She said, yeah, mom told me that. It's okay, good. Where do you think your mom learned it from? <laughs> so loosen them up, turn left a couple turns to loosen them up. Uh, so they, hopefully they have stops in there so the screw doesn't fall out if you go too far because that might be fun getting back in. Uh, but loosen it up and when you look underneath, you can see the positive and negative. Red goes on positive, black goes on negative. And you just slide the wire into the appropriate hole. The red goes into the positive, like I said, and the black goes into negative. And it'll be a plus or a minus, plus for positive, minus for negative. And then you just tighten the screw down. And you don't have to, like, get ridiculous, but you want to tighten it down so it's snug. And once it's done, I like to give a little, anytime I do electrical, give a little tug. Again, not yanking on it, but a little tug to make sure it's tight. You don't want loose electrical contacts. Then you start getting arcing and heat and bad things happen. So just make sure it's snug down, it's not going to fall out on you, or be loose and start arcing or something. And then once you've done that, and this would have a display if we were out in the sun, you'd be able to see that it was saying how much volts are coming in or whatever information is showing. There's some buttons on it to show different things. And you connect red to the positive on your battery and black to the negative on your battery. And that's all there is to it. And you'll be charging your battery. This controller does also have a couple of USB ports on it, which is nice. So if you've got this thing sitting in the sun, and you're charging your power station or your batteries or whatever, you can also plug in a USB cable and charge your iPhone or your iPad or your camera or whatever you need to charge that will charge off USB. So nice flexibility there. Um, and it's just a little screwdriver you want to do those. But that's how you connect to use this with a solar charge controller and to charge your traditional batteries in your rig and like I said pretty much every solar charge controller I've seen has been very similar to this in terms of how you connect it so if you're doing like a DIY system you know you just run the same thing you run the wires from there and you'll use ring terminals or something to connect it to your battery so in this case it's designed to be portable so you just connect it as you need to um, and when you're done with it make sure you disconnect these from your house battery you don't want to have these things floating around on either end uh, with power going to them so you could have again a short and bad things happening so now if you want to use it to charge your portable power station you just unplug these connectors here leave this one be and then you grab the one for your portable power station which has that end on it there and these just plug together and once you've done that you can plug this end here into the input on your portable power station and it'll start charging. This is what I had set up outside the other day was just like this. Like I said, this was a three foot cable and you got another, probably another three feet on here. So you got about six feet and if you want more, you can get an extension cable. Um, angle this to the sun and you're good to go. It's that simple and that is the beauty of the portable power stations and portable solar panels like this one from Flex Solar is it's literally plug and play simple. I used to always tell people to do a DIY system, uh, a little cheaper and then you had more flexibility and all this. I've changed my opinion on that for a lot of people. Now, if you need a really crazy big system, that's probably what you're going to do still, although you can get some really big power stations these days, but you, you'll probably end up wanting to go with a DIY system, um, whether you do it yourself or have it professionally installed. Uh, but for a lot of people, the portable power station and a solar panel like this one from Flex Solar, whether you, it's portable or whether you mount it on the roof of your vehicle, is probably the way to go. So power stations have gone down in price a lot, and the features and performance of them has improved a lot at the same time. So it's more affordable, and you're getting better performance out of it. And at the same time, 
it's just simple. And after talking to a lot of people over the years, I've been a nomad and I've been making videos. This is my, I've started making videos in 2016. I've had an opportunity to talk to an awful lot of people in that time. And the bottom line is most people like the idea of a simple system, the plug and play simplicity. It's sort of like Apple computers. They just work. You don't have to mess around with a whole bunch of stuff. And by the way, I like geeking around sometimes. I have a DIY system in the van. I can replace any component. I can redo things by myself. comes to computers, I've run Linux. I mean, I, I like messing around with stuff like that as a hobby. But at the same time, when it comes to work, I just want my computer to do the job. I don't want to have to mess around with things and things being weird and drivers not working and all kind of that stuff. I just want to be able to use the computer and do the work I got to do. I just want it to work. And when it comes to solar, I, th I think there's a lot of people have the same opinion. They don't care about all kinds of geeky specs. They just want to be able to put out a portable solar panel like this one, plug it into their portable power station, and they're charging. And when it comes to using their electricity, they don't want to have to think about inverters and different wiring things and what gauge wire you got going to this outlet and, and all these other things. They just want to be able to turn it on, hit a button, it powers up, you plug in your phone, you plug in your laptop, whatever it is you need to charge, and it just works. And there's a lot to be said for it, it just works. <laughs> and plug and play simplicity. And that's, I think, so that I think is the appeal of portable power stations and portable solar panels like this one, is that it just works, it's plug and play simple. And I appreciate that. Even though I'm capable of geeking out with all that stuff, I appreciate the simplicity and the reliability of that system. So that's how this works. You know, you have the wine coming out, you just connect it to whichever cable you need, your your Anderson or your uh, the one for your, I can't remember the number of it, it's a model number, but if, the one for your portable power station. If you And if you want to use it to charge up a traditional battery, whether it's your engine starting battery or a battery in the, your coach battery, your house battery, whatever you want to call it, you just reconnect this, the power is then going out and into the solar charge controller. Then you just want to connect these. They go right in on the bottom here and loosen the screws, put them in, tighten the screws down, connect these to your battery, and you're charging. It's that simple. So, great system here. Really flexible panel, and it allows you to do different things that you're not locked into only charging your portable power station or only charging on USB or whatever. You've got lots of options with this thing. So I think it's a great product. If you're looking for a couple hundred watt rigid panel, I think this is definitely worth checking out. Uh, Quality is good, features are good, and it works. So, so I hope this was helpful. If there are any additional questions, uh, let me know in the comments. I don't want to make this video too long going into nitty gritty stuff that people maybe don't care about or most people don't care about. But I did want to at least hit the highlights and show how this all connects and how you actually use it in the real world. So you'll see me using this more in the future. Um, been pretty windy this week and I've been hunkered down with a lot of work projects. But I'll be getting out in the backcountry on some trips fairly soon. And as I do that, this is going to be going along in the van with me. I'll be able to recharge the Blue Eddy power station, or if I need to, I can connect it up using these to my house batteries if I need to give it a boost. Usually, I'm totally fine. I have 400 watts of solar on the roof of the van, a couple hundred amp hours of AGM batteries in there. But if I'm parked in the forest and getting a lot of shade from the trees, sometimes I have trouble. And if it's really cloudy, heavy cloud cover for a few days in a row, I might start having trouble. And in the past, if that happens, I have to like start the engine and charge off the alternator for a while. But now I have the other option. I can connect these and have an extra 200 watts coming in or 600 watts total coming in. So that should make short work out of charging up those batteries. And the other thing with the flexibles is if you're in the forest or something and you're getting shade from the trees, which happens, you might get sun part of the day and then shade and sun and shade as the sun moves across the sky or as the earth rotates around. Well, if you want to describe that, um, you know, is you can put, hook this thing up and you can move it around so that you're always getting the sun. Also, in the wintertime, even if you're down in the desert, the sun's low in the horizon. And if you don't have tiltable panels on the roof of your vehicle, I do not. They're just fixed flat. Something like this, you can angle it towards the sun and get more sunlight coming in. I'd probably get as much or more power coming in from this panel, this 200 watt panel, tipped and angled at the sun, than I get out of the 400 watts flat on the roof during the winter because the sun's hitting them 
at an angle and you really want like 90 degrees to the sun if possible that's where you get the most power out of these things all right i'm going to quit there <laughs> that's long enough probably but i hope that answered all the questions about this if you do have any additional questions let me know in the comments i'll try and answer them there and if i miss something big like i did with the last video i'll make an update like this explaining what i should have shown you in the last video but Thanks, Untethered Nomad, for pointing that out. That was a really important question, and I did not manage to show this in the last one because I got distracted. So, hope you all found us helpful. We'll catch you in the next video.